Cup final. A big crowd inside Cairo's International Stadium. 16th October 2009 and the Cairo International Stadium is filled to capacity to witness the final of the Under-20 World Cup between Ghana and Brazil. Three times the continent had made it to the final, but there was nothing to show. However, the tournament was on African soil this time and there was hope of a first ever victory. For Ghana, it was also an opportunity for revenge as it had lost 2-1 to Brazil in 1993 in Australia and they had made their way to the final by playing adventurous football that produced 16 goals. And for head coach Salah Stete, it was the consequences of moving a lot of those players from the preceding age group. Wonderful time that would be very difficult to be erased from my mind. It was a moment of glory, a moment of joy, a moment of success, a moment of history making. And a moment not for me alone, but for my team and for Ghana and for Africa. Ghana started the match brightly. But the dream to win the under-20 World Cup soon turned Ari as Daniel Addo was sent off in the first half. Ghana had to fight hard with 10 men and they did for 120 minutes. Midfielder Imanol Ajmambedu played that night in Cairo and he says the team held it all together during a very difficult time. In the first 27 minutes, playing against Brazil, you got a red card. So just imagine. So I have to move from the defensive method to uh, to defend, to help Jonathan, so that we can draw back the day a bit, so that he can help the method. If you watch closely, that red card I held, I put my hands ahead, I was so surprised about it. And, uh, but we have a, a capable and able team, and uh, we could quickly do adjustments, play in the formation play and uh, finally for us uh, our hard work went to perfection. Before the penalty kick, if, if you replay what happened, you, you saw me speaking to the referee, we were having a chat, I went to him and so this red card was harsh. He said uh, it wasn't harsh, but he promised, he told me, my friend, don't worry, now we are going through penalty kicks. Goal as the match ended, and it was now down to the penalty shootout. Brazil striker Alan Kariak was the first in line. 1-0 to Brazil, and Ghana had to respond through captain Andre Dede Ayu. Brazil scored their second kick through their captain Guy Lemo, but defender Samuel Nkum also scored. 2-2 it was and Douglas Costa put his kick away but Jonathan Mensa simply flopped his lines. Mensa's kick that was aimed at the bottom left corner was easily saved by Brazilian goalkeeper Rafael. I was a little bit disturbed but uh, it doesn't end until the referee ends the game. Penalty kicks are lucky but I, 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 I argue on that. It depends on the mental and the mental of the team. These are things you need in penalty kicks. And if you if you look at the rest of the play that played after those two two misses, uh, they were very clinical penalty kickers. I was using this slogan, cool fire. What will happen surely? What the good says will happen, usually happen. And that this slogan was the slogan in camp. At a given time, we weren't even mentioning our names. We would see as a comfort equipment. What will happen if it will happen? And the South Americans were now on the up, and Souza had to score to give them the advantage. But Ghana goalkeeper Daniel Ejo saved the kick, but brighter there, wasted his and handed the initiative back to Brazil. It was now or never. In a few seconds, Brazil could emerge as world youth champions and the honor was given to Maicon. Ghanaian and African hearts were racing. Brazilian throats were ready to shout for joy. This was it. Maicon sent his kick high above the top left corner and all of a sudden, 
Ghana had another chance and Dominic Kadia calmly slotted his kick home. Sudden death was upon us and one slip could give the title to either side. Brazil went up first. Daniel Ejo quickly moved to his left and palmed Teixeira's kick away and that meant in a few seconds Ghana and the whole of Africa could jump in celebration. In Daniel Ejo, who was very, very confident. So, uh, we had a, a good stopper in Daniel Ejo. I remember that the, in the course of the game, he made some few important saves. Important saves. So that motivated him to believe in himself. And uh, in all the matches we played, he was also fantastic. So uh, uh, he was an unsung hero in the team. But Emmanuel Lajmambudu had to put his kick away. It was Nevi. We all held our breath, but the player seemed confident because of an earlier conversation with his mother. He came to the panicky case. So uh, when the last one came, I told David that at that time he was playing in Europe, you know, I was playing for a Santi Cotto. I told Eddie, Eddie, go for it. He said, hey, Ghana panic. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, Opoku He said, no way. So I was there for like just 30 seconds. Then I told what my mom told me. I said, no, this is the time. I have to go for the ball. Unfortunately for me, I made it. Is it Africa? Is it Africa? It is! won the competition for the first time on African soil. Ghana had beaten Brazil to win the 2009 Under-20 World Cup. I didn't know what was going through. I, I just op just took off my shirt. I wanted to go on the left. Then Opokwajima left. I mean, I went on the left, right again. Like, I don't know what was going on in my mind. I said, ah, so it's true. We have won the World Cup. Yeah. At that time, Adia have won the goal king, scored so many goals. The team was like compact. You can see there is spirit in the team. And that memory I can never forget. For the very first time, and the explosion of joy all around Ghana and Africa was simply amazing. The black satellites had rewritten the history books and their feet will forever be remembered. Before 2000, I have been doing it, and I'm still, still doing it. And people are still confusing themselves. They keep on asking me, how did you do it? And the thing is, I've been doing it. I've been proactive on it. And the thing is, it's an automatic thing that is happening. And still people are still confused, asking me, how am I doing it? But we see how it goes, so we shall do it again. <laughs> I can see the colors of the rain. Right, so Sela started there saying that he will do it. He, de he doesn't know how he does all those things, but he will do it. I've been in, in the studio um, with me is Daniel Eje, who was a member of that 2009 squad. And remember, he saved two crucial penalties for Ghana. Daniel, thank you so much for joining me. How have you been? Um, what, what do you remember about 2009? Uh, a lot, a lot. There is something that I will never forget in my life because... Uh, it has never happened, and we, we did. We did make African proud and the nation proud as well. So this is something uh, me and my family will, will never forget. You won the waffle, you won the African championship, then you went to the World Cup. Did you ever think, or even as a team, did you think you can make it to that point and get your hands on the trophy? Yeah, because when, 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 when we were going into the tournament, previous tournament, we were, we, were, uh, we were always thinking that we must do something for the nation and for our family as well. So every time we play, we try to win and to win something for the nation. So we were fully prepared and we were thinking we were going to achieve something. But what was special about the team that went to Egypt? You, you've been with the players, Dede, Ajman Badu and the likes. What was special about that team? The unity among the team and Dede was uh, uh, the great man behind all the 
all the players because he always encourages us and he's a good leader. Every time we are down, he will come to us and explain to us and he will be fighting for the winning bonus for us because that time we were... So it starts from there, the winning yeah, bonus starts from another Yeah, 20. because, you know, sometimes we are complaining and he's the one because he has been in Europe for long, so he will, he will tell us to to keep quiet, we should play and win, we will go for the... He will sort things out. Yeah, and he did. Right. He's a great leader. W but what did um, winning the um, World Cup, what did it do to your career at that time? A lot, because after the World Cup, uh, I was chosen as a second goalkeeper to Richard Kingston for the World Cup 2010. And for Angola too, I was there. And he has done a lot in my life. The World Cup has done a lot in my life, and he is still doing it in my life. The concentration that you got when you're going to that penalty shootout, saving Tashera's kick was very key for Ghana. How did you do that? I've been studying from the from great, great goalkeepers in Europe, like and like uh, Gigi Buffon. Uh, Van Dissa, Casillas, Bates, and I've been doing training as well. So this thing is like a gift from God. Anytime there is penalty kick, I always say three. And I don't, I don't, I always do training too. I study and do training at my our training ground, Liberty Professional. I always do training with. When when I was going to the World Cup, I was doing training with Tuga. Agbani, the uh, under 20 goalkeeper, and yeah. I was telling him to hit it hard, uh, some directions and stuff, and I was saving it. So I was, I was fully confident that when it comes to penalty, with the help of God, I'll be able to save the nation. And truly, and I did marvelous work for the nation. You, you, you saw his movements. That is why you went on the left. Yeah, the way you were standing. You know, I study a lot. Still now, I do study. The way you are standing, I said, no, this guy will never go to my right. He will surely go to the left. Then I, I move quickly there and I save it. Because, you know, penalty, sometimes if you said you wait for the ball, and when there is punch, you can dive to the, the place, and, but still, the ball will be in the net. So I, I decided everything that I was doing, during the penalty, I was studying it at training. I was doing the same thing at training, and the coaches were saying, "Why, why, why am I doing that?" I said, "No, this is my territory. I have to do this." This is what do you know best. Yeah, if I if I study it and if I'm if I'm practicing it in the game in the game, if I do that, it will help me, and and it came to pass. So I, I was very happy that what I was doing at training came to pass. So af after that, and um, your hard work, would would you say your hard work paid off? when they gave you opportunity to the Black Stars? Yeah, sure. My hard work uh, pay everything. And it's not by by chance being to the uh, Black Stars. It's my hard work and dedication. It's, it's not going too well for you when it comes to club football. We all know how much you put in in terms of hard work and also um, a bit shaky for you at the Black Stars. Are you, ha have you lost hope? Never, Daniel will never lose so, because I know what I'm capable of doing. I'm back with Liberty Professionals and I'm training hard and my focus is to help the, the club to to reach the highest level. Then I'll, I'll, then everything that comes on my way, I'll take it. So what, what do you want to achieve with Liberty this time? Uh, I think we want to be in the top four and win trophies because uh, since 2008-2009 we won the uh, top four, group top four. That was my upcoming. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, help with, with my colleagues. We help Liberty to, uh, to do something good this season. Even finally, before we um, wrap up with you, Salah Stata has been, um, he spoke um, very um, good of you when I interviewed him. How much of inspiration has been has he been um, like into your, your career? Uh, when I was coming to Liberty, 
the late uh, Aladis Tete went to him and, 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 and told him that I just a goalkeeper coming from BT International that time I was, I was playing coast and he said no this boy will not train here the boy will train with the youth team and Aladi went down begging then I said to myself since today I will never disgrace the coach and the boys because what they are what the, the, the president of the club has done for me I have to anytime I'll be in the I'll be in post I have to impress him and the coach so anytime I see them I have to do something what are some of the things that um, you get from Salah Stete because he looks like a, a very good talker what are some of the motivation like words that he he, he tells you players always tell us to do what we, we are capable of doing best and we should leave the rest to him he always encourage us like at, in training when you come to training you always see sometimes if, if I made save be, oh, what a good save how did you do it like every time boasting our Amura so we find it uh, happy and confidence when, when we are with him doing training and playing much as well the experience you, you've got it I'm sure will be with you for forever yeah forever because I'm, 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 I have exposure and I'm still working hard to, to have more and steady now to, to, to reach my goals so I'll say Daniel J will never uh, flop, we always go high. It's a matter of time, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best for the nation and my club side as well. Talking about your other teammates, your colleagues that you played in 2009 with, I'm, I'm sure you've been speaking to some of them. You've seen how some of them are doing well. What exactly, how how, how well do you think um, they, they can do? Uh, they'll go for, I'll, I'll tell them they should uh, keep the fire. Uh, they should always keep the fire burning and they should focus and you know how to work dedication. If if you have this in mind, you always go for be the local players that went to the tournament, some are still playing uh, as local and some are in Europe. It's it's normal to play in, in your own country because when you when you play here everything is easy. Sometimes when you go to uh Europe, sometimes it's difficult but when you are just quick it's it's very good as well. So I will say to my colleagues who are, who are here, they should keep on working hard, their time will come. Okay, so just like Celesteta always says, um, are you hoping to do this again with yeah, maybe Blackstar? I will do it again. Okay, thank you so much, Daniel Ledger, for coming to yeah, the okay. studio. I've been speaking to Daniel Ledger, who plays for Liberty Professionals and also under-20 World Cup winner in 2009.